Well, hello, Internet. So nice to see you. We are live on both YouTube and Facebook. And who knows from where they're watching us anyway. We, I'm Thomas Azzilli, I'm music for guitar.com, and welcome to another music theory talk live. So we are in the middle of a heat wave here in Canada. I mean, it's heat wave for Canadians, of course, as I was saying before to a friend of mine, it's like we have like 30 one Celsius, which is 88 Fahrenheit. So it's not really that hot, but for Canadian standard, that's melting. So if you see me fainting or my guitar goes out of tune, I apologize in advance, <laughs> okay? And now I want to introduce to you guys, even if many of you know him already, because he's been already a, um, a guest here a couple of times. And I introduce you to guitar, acoustic, acoustic guitar player extraordinaire, expert on all kinds of strange techniques from slapping to harmonics to the topic of today quartal harmony simon candy from down under hello simon hello tomaso how are you i'm very good again that is... except for the heat <laughs> actually for, for, for me as an italian it's great <laughs> that's uh, how are you there here. yeah good i mean we're still winter so i'm you're you're trying to cool down i'm trying to warm up um, yep yep uh, but yeah 30 degrees it's that's that's okay that's a nice summer's day in in australia mm -hmm. it's it's we, we remind everybody that when we have the summer up in the northern hemisphere down under it's winter yes so you do christmas on the beach i guess <laughs> yeah yeah yep, one day absolutely. i have to come and see that <laughs> anyway <laughs> fantastic we are getting already some people on the chat if you're in the chat say hi and okay. we have andreas who's staying up till 3 a.m here to see the stream andreas you're my hero i want to know where do you live for being for being 3 a.m right now we have morris from syracuse yeah. rafi from puerto rico michael the viking from israel okay that, that that's interesting michael the viking from israel <laughs> are you there conquering or you live there um <laughs> Ernie from Hong Kong, Andrew from Australia, Carlos from Dallas, Texas. We have people from literally all over the world. Thank you guys for being here on a Friday evening, or I mean, evening for me, in the middle of August. <laughs> okay, I really appreciate you guys being so faithful to those, um, to, to our live streams. Anyway, we want to talk about quartal harmony the mysterious quartal harmony, okay, which sounds really complex. It's like when I, when I, was, I was writing an email promoting this live stream and I was saying that the first time I've heard that, I'm like, I don't even want to learn it because I knew two things. First, the strange name and I'm like, no, not putting it. And two, that it's used in jazz. And so at the time when I was learning, I was like, okay, those are two, it's already two negative points for me. I'm not even touching it. And then one day, uh, one another music teacher of mine show, was playing something uh, and played just a few chords and I loved it. Uh, what is that? Quartal harmony. Oh, interesting. <laughs> now I have to learn it. <laughs> and it's not that hard, actually. So I'm going to leave you the, um, the stage, <laughs> the virtual stage to Simon. So Simon can show you an example or two, maybe, and then tell you what it's all about. And uh, and then we we'll go from there because there's lots to be said about quartal harmony and, and various derivative. Okay, Ken. Okay, okay, Simon. Yeah, sure. So perhaps um, I will do a little demonstration of some quartal harmony, and then we can sort of break it down a little bit and, and give you an insight into what it is. And as as Tommaso says, it's it's it, it might sound complicated. It's actually quite simple. Um, so what I'll do is I'll play over a, a track here to give a little bit of context. And what I want you to listen for is the chords that I'm playing. So it's just a standard blues track in a, in a little, sorry, Tommaso, in a little bit of a jazz <laughs> um, style. And uh, yeah, let, let me just sort of play a little bit of chordal harmony over the top and just listen for the chords um, with that. Okay, so we'll get a blues track. Thank you. 
Okay. So I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. <laughs> awesome. It's uh, so it's it's very very simple, but it, it it sounds like there that perhaps that I knew a lot of chords, um, but I was really just playing. Well, let me let me break it down in in very simple terms. If I look at a chord that I was playing there, just one of these little chord shapes, this one here, for example, and I'm playing on strings five, four, and three, and I'm starting from a D note. Okay, on the fifth string, fifth fret. So the next note up in my chord is also at the fifth fret on the fourth string, and that's a G. And then the next note above that is a C sharp on string three. So I'm just using a little um, three string chord here, five, four, three. And what you might notice there is that those, the intervals there are a fourth apart. Traditional harmony, tertian harmony is thirds, right? If we look at any chord, um, be it major, minor, extensions, diminished, um, they're all stacked thirds, minor, major and minor thirds. And that's traditional harmony, functional harmony. Here we've got a different um, scenario because our intervals of the chord, the notes of the chord are stacked in fourths, hence chordal harmony. So I'm thinking, if I'm thinking of an A7 chord, if there's an A7 chord, um, playing and I want to do some comping with some chords over the top using chordal harmony I'm going to stay diatonic here. You, we don't necessarily have to be strictly diatonic, but let's let's stay diatonic here So I could pick literally any note um, That's in the key not in the chord in the key of a mixolydian here. Okay over an a7 chord So there's a D note that'll do so I've just got to stack fourths above to get my chord. So I've got a D, I've got my G, and the reason why I've got C sharp is because we're thinking A mixolydian here. If I wanted to, I mean that's a little three chord, a three string chord. I could add to that. I can make it a four string if I want by adding another fourth, which would be the F sharp, okay, at the uh, seventh fret second string. F sharp because again I'm staying diatonic to mixolydian there. And I get a, an extra voice in, in my chord. I could go again, if I want, I could go five strings um, and add the B above the F sharp. Again, another fourth above. And, it, and if I play that over an A chord, it's going to, um, it's going to give me some kind of, it's gonna suggest an A7 chord of some sort. It's got the D, so that's we could call that the 11th. We've got the flat 7 there, we've got the 3rd, we've got the 6th, we've got the 9th. So we get all these nice extensions, depending where you stem the chord from. If I went down one fret from there, C sharp, that's in our key, so that's fine. Then I add a 4th above that, F sharp, I go a 4th above that again, D, so these are all in my 4th fret. And a fourth above B, staying true to our key, a, a mixolydian, is E. There's another little voice in that I could play uh, on top of the A7 chord. And uh, if we, we don't even need to analyze this. I mean, it's interesting to, to see, but you just need to know the shapes. And we'll talk about the shapes in a moment. But if we were to look at that, we've got a C sharp, that's the third. We've got an F sharp, that's the sixth, the ninth. So you see the same sorts of notes again. And this time we've got a fifth in there. So we've got like a... Little vamp on top of an, an A7 chord. If I just play that A7 here... So there's our A... Just looping the A7 here. lower part okay so someone's soloing you can get out of the way of them and just play the lower part and just comp around and and it gives and, and that's just two shapes we could extend that right up the fretboard and the great thing about chordal harmony why it's so simple 
is because there are only so many shapes. It's, it's like if I play a three string uh, set um, on any group of three strings, I think I have three shapes. Yeah, three shapes. That's it. So it... Right? I've got this shape that occurs, which is just a bar a number of times, and I've got two other shapes there, this one and this one here. So it, and that's the same for any string, any three string set. If it's four, if you put it across four strings, I think there might be four shapes, but still very, very simple. And so you don't really have to sit there and, I mean, you can initially sit there and work out your quarter harmony shapes, or you can just work from shapes already plotted out. But if you do that, you'll, you'll start to learn the shapes and you won't have to think of notes at all. You'll just work on a shape and play around with it. So Tomaso, you want to? Yes, yes. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's very simple, that's the thing. And the problem is that it could be so simple that sometimes um, when we give the explanation, it just passes over people's head because it's too simple. So <laughs> I just wanted to, I wanted to do two things. I want to show an example of how those chords sound also in a completely different way. Then I want to go through again in a moment to the theory so people can understand exactly how to do this in, uh, on, on, on the guitar. So first example is that, as you see, quartal harmony works great in jazz. For me, though, I have a big passion about film, music, and, uh, and, and TV series music, and for me, it's a specific sound. So, you know what sound it is? It's, it's, it's this sound here, here is this chord. It's Star Trek, the original series, okay? They are descending on the planet, there is always Kirk, Spock, McCoy, and a red shirt, which is gonna die a few minutes later, okay, and... Oops. And they go on with this course like that, okay? And it's this kind of 70s, 60s, 70s science fiction, okay? It's, it was before Star Trek, it just, it's associated with that. And that's one of the sounds. And then again, you, you hear it. And people want to give this kind of suspend sound. They take one of the ships and they just move it up and down regardless of the scale. Or you can just follow the scale. If you follow the scale, you get beautiful, beautiful chords and sounds. It's... All... And then playing quarter chords made of four notes. So here's the thing, how those are built. Normal chords, triads, um, seventh chords, everything you see, it's built by stacking notes in thirds. Which, if you know what it means, it's easy. If you don't know what it means, stacking notes in thirds mean, it's like, whoosh. So here's the thing. If I want to build a C major chord, what do I do? I have the C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. I start from the C note. Then I take the note one third above. C, D, E. And I have an E. So I said C note and the E note. Then I go another third above the E. So E, F, G. So I have the C note, the E note, and the G note. And if I play C, E, G, I have a C major chord. Then when I play it normally, I play C, E, G, I add another C, another E, because I can double those notes however I want all the time. And that's my C major chord. Okay? That's how we build chords. Normally. Okay? In what we will call the ternal harmony. Ternal meaning stacking chords in thirds. Ternal is pig Latin, if you want, for building thirds. Okay, like quartal, it's pig Latin. Okay, because it's not really Latin. Uh, for chords building fourths. So, in quartal harmony, I do exactly the same, but rather than going up a third, I go up a fourth. So I start from C. I go up a fourth. C, D, E, F. So my next note is F. From the F, I go up another fourth. F, a, F, G, I don't even know my alphabet. F, G, A, B. So I have C, F, B. I could stay at three notes. It's a chord. I could add another note if I want. So after the B, I grab another fourth. B, C, D, E. And if I want, I can put another note. After E, I grab another fourth. E, F, G, A. Okay, that's the sound. Okay, and since it's built in fourths, since it's fourths and not thirds, 
it sounds completely different. But here's the thing, the shapes are usually simpler, there are less shapes in general, okay? And those shapes are usually simpler and repeated more often throughout the scale. So once you know just a handful of shapes, and um, Simon was playing them on string 3, 4, and 5, but you can play them on any, on any of the strings. Okay, I uh, I like to play them on the first four strings because I like I like cutting through the mix in a band. Okay, so I always play my chords here so they can hear me. But if you if you are if you if you want a, war, a warmer sound and a more subdued and I mean cozy sound, you do like what Simon was doing. So play it on the string three, four, and five so that you get this other kind of sound essentially okay and again both good options but you just pick three strings <laughs> okay and do this to, and stack those notes in fourths okay so starting from c c f b starting from d d g uh d sorry d g what am i saying c uh starting from e e a d okay makes sense just play those three notes and hear how they sound okay and they are so typical that if you start putting even just a little bit of groove it already sounds like advanced jazz modern jazz okay oh i get a great there's a great comment here i'm just gonna put it here you, you've seen it now Good Lord, just when you think you were getting music theory under your belt. What's next? Quintal harmony? Yes, give us 10 minutes. Seriously, there is quintal harmony exists, but we can go even beyond that. Uh, <laughs> but you see, that's the other thing. It's This is pretty much what I say every other day. Good Lord, just when I thought I had music theory under my belt. <laughs> okay, Somebody had another idea, and it sounds good. <laughs> and I didn't think of this before. It never ends. It never ends. And there are always people with more ideas. There are always people with good ideas. And, and, and that's the beauty of it, OK? With music theory, you study the basics and you get some tools. But that with those tools, you can build anything you want, OK? So that's how quartal harmony has been used so far. It was used mostly by jazz player. And that's the sound that Simon, Simon was showing us. And by people doing film music. And that's most of the sound you get. But again, mostly. Because if you change the rhythm, if you change the instrument, if you change a number of other things, it can sound in so many different ways. Just like standard normal functional harmony or ternal harmony, you can make jazz with that, you can make pop, you can make country, you can make trance disco music, you can make, okay, you can make dubstep, okay, and it's still the same ternal harmony. Quartal harmony has exactly the same range, okay? so. And in a moment, I'm going to show you later, I'm going to show you the quintal harmony and how it connects and a piece of doing quintal harmony. Makes sense? OK. And quintal harmony in prog rock or any pointers, I guess. Hey, OK. I'd like to say, uh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't show the, the comment. I was just reading it. Any thoughts on using quartal harmony in prog rock or any pointers, I guess? Well, first of all, listen to. Emerson, Lake and Palmer, King Crimson, okay, um, and, 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 and all those people, okay, and Gentle Giant, all, all, all those bands, okay, Genesis, they're using those, not all the time, but they're using those pretty often, and indeed, um, especially in King Crimson, they use quintal harmony too, uh, but that would be, how they're using it, that would be a much, much, much longer <laughs> conversation, um, but beside that, those are just chords, so you, with, with, how do you use the C major chord in prog music? You take the C major chord, you take a few other chords, you create a chord progression, and you play it. And quarter harmony is exactly the same. You can take a few chords, and you don't need to know how they're named. And indeed, uh, often those are not, not even named. Okay. Sometimes they're called quartal one for the chord built on the first note, quartal two for the chord built on the second note. Otherwise, you just say these. Okay. It's this chord. This. Okay. This chord, this chord, this chord, okay, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, just saying, uh, pick a few of those, play them, try the different orders. Forget about the names. Forget about the, just just listen to how they sound and put them together. That's your chord progression, and you build something from there. That's how you start. 
Then if we want to go way more in depth, we can, but that's where you start. Simon, I've been talking too much now, so I'm gonna send it back to you. Uh, where do we go from here? Well, perhaps a few, yeah, like a, a few ways you could use it and, and perhaps, yeah, where to begin. I mean, everything Tomas was saying there was, of course, on point. And um, a couple of ways I like to use it. So I was perhaps first, yeah, learning a string set. So the, the top, you know, three or four strings would be fine. If you want fewer shapes to, to deal with, even though it's, it's not too many, you know, overall, uh, three string sets. Four strings you could do. Um, I would uh, start, how I sort of started with it was on the top four strings and I would stay diatonic to a key. You don't have to, just like in any music, you don't have to stay diatonic. But I'm gonna stay diatonic here and build in, um, in I'm gonna think G major is the, the central key here. So I've got my E note, It doesn't. I don't have to start on the root. Um, I've got my E note and I, I won't go through everything painstakingly here, but if I stack fourths from the E note through to my key of G, I get a little shape here, which is no more than the second fret on the third and fourth strings and the third fret on the top two. And then if I move that up two frets, that would be still staying to the key. So same shape based off the F sharp. The G would have the fret between the two fingers. So pretty simple so far. Staying true to our key again. If I go up to A, same shape as we had for the first two. If we go off the B, same shape again. So, so far two shapes, four of one and one of another. I mean, if you went no further, I mean, that's pretty simple to, to begin with. You almost got one shape. Um, if I took it just a touch further, I'm gonna get, it's like, it's basically a 13 chord there, isn't it? Um, more or less with a nine. Um, but that, the shape here, based off of the C note, is um, a little bit different. Okay, little diagonal shape there. So is the one after it. And then we're back to where we started. So I always, it's, it's like if you've learned, it's like anything, you learn the sequence. So if I was learning sixth, there's a sequence to six. You got one of these, then two of these, then two, and then two, and then one. So it's the same with the quartal harmony. I know that either side of this shape, I've got the same shape. I know when I get this one, that one always follows. This is on the top four strings, and then I'm back to where I started. So it's a pretty simple sequence to learn. Now, in, in, a, in a jazz sort of context, which is where I've used it a lot, um, there's a chord progression in jazz, probably the most common, 2-5-1. And if we had a 2-5-1 chord progression in G, that'd be A minor, D dominant, C, uh, G major 7. Now we could, you know, you often hear jazz guitarists comping over the top of that. Comping meaning playing chords to complement the, um, yeah, the, the soloist the instrumentalist or the vocalist or whatever, okay? We're complementing, comping. So it's just punching chords across the progression. And you hear a lot of chords in jazz and we could be playing traditional harmony here and playing A minor sevens over the A minor seven, D seven, G, etc. Or you could just literally improvise on this, on top of this track and it'll, you'll be playing, depending on what chord's happening at the time, you'll be playing some kind of version of that chord. You don't have to know those. So if I just play this track, just got the bass, hopefully you can hear that. It's the A, D to G major seven. So you've got the two, five, and the one. So if I just play these shapes randomly almost, String sets to sort of, you know.
game, that type of thing. So I'm I'm not thinking I'm not even really thinking of the chords. We could, but you, it's just like a scout. You just plan over the top. It's all in key. If you were to stop at any point and look at what chordal shape you're playing and the chord at the time, you'll have some version of that chord with extensions, ninths, sixths, etc. A couple of chord tones in there. It's, it's beautiful. It's it's so easy to do. You can have a more kind of uh, you know complicated progression and you might need to move key center but it still blocks not it's not you know it's 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 so much <laughs> it's it's simple it really is simple um so that's one uh application of it in terms of you know using it uh, it doesn't have to be jazz it's just how i've sort of learned it and played it a lot um Tomasa, you want to you, uh, I, we have a, some interesting questions here, and I want to address it because I see that the, the chat is going, is taking a life of their own, and they're trying to answer that, and I want to save them actually before they go too far. Because it's a, it's a great question, it's a fantastic question. Are the rules about switching between quartal harmony and standard harmony? Question number one. Question number two Do you need to use a diminished chord to connect? First, Music theory is not made of rules. There are no rules. <laughs> okay, there is, music theory is made of structures, okay, or of tools. Okay, is there a, is there a, is, is there a rule that you have to use a hammer to build something? No. Okay, if you have nails, the hammer the hammer will make sense. If you have screws, the screwdriver will make sense. With quartal harmony, you can do whatever you want. Now, can you mix quartal harmony and normal harmony? Yes. No, no problem. I mean, it's not it's not water and oil. Okay, they work perfectly together. I can play a C chord, and I can play an A quartal, and I can play an A minor, Why not? F quartal, maybe a, a G, maybe something else. Maybe I can play this. Actually, it should be yeah, like this. Okay, actually no. I will be the portal. Sorry. Point is, you can mix and match normal ternal functional chords and used in a non-functional way usually. So it's not as usually progression five one. It's just chords and quartal harmony. This is with three notes. With four notes, it works exactly the same. Okay, and again, you can. It's just different colors. Okay, so then there was an A minor, the ninth, and then I played this quartal chord here. And I was playing, what I was playing? This, which is uh, an F major seventh. Okay. And then I'm playing this other quartal chord here. You can use the quartal chord as a pivot to switch keys. Yeah, that's another, that's another question they are using here, definitely. Quartals tend to sound slightly more dissonant than uh, ternals, so you can use it. To, when you want to switch keys, you want to put some dissonance in there to signal that something is about to happen. And so, yes, you can use the quartal harmony, but you can do the opposite too. You can use quartal harmony normally and use the ternal harmony to show that something is happening. As long as there's something different than what you established before, I mean, you play something with just ternal harmony, you establish a baseline of ternal harmony, you use quartal to change, or vice versa. You play something in quartal harmony and only quartal, you establish this sound, that's your baseline, then to switch keys, you put normal ternal chords, that's a change. Your ear had to adapt, and the change signal that your, something else is going to change, and so there you can change key. Or you can change a key staying in quartal harmony, I mean, it's... Just and then go okay, I switch from essentially C major to E flat major, but using quartal chords. Okay. Um simply like that. So we play chords from one key and then chords from another key. <laughs> okay. So it makes sense. Can and then another question, can I play wait? Too, too fast, okay. Can I play both natural minor scale and major scale over quarter harmony? Yes, definitely. As I mean, as long as it's the same uh, notes, you're... 
the answer to most questions in, that start with can I, it's yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, that's the thing. That, that's what I mean. These are tools. Quartal harmony is a tool. It makes this specific sound. You can put this tool together with any other tool. Triads, seventh chords, cluster chords, okay, no chords, okay, riffs and quartal harmony, okay, it's up to you, those are the ingredients, and you can mix and match however you want, okay, makes sense, so uh, this is, since the guitar is arranging fourths, is in quartal harmony present in G major chord, not really, um, you want to build chords this way, like starting from a note and going up in fourths, that's what we give quartal harmony its sound. Now, if after doing that, some notes are not playable, and for quartal harmony, they will always be playable on the guitar, but in other instruments, they may not, okay? So in this case, you can switch a few notes around, but still, you're not changing the notes, you're just switching their order. There is no way to create a G major chord, which is G, B, D, moving only in fourths, because G to B is a third, B to um, D, it's a, it's, a, it's a third, sorry, what did I say? G to B is a third, B to D is a third, major third and minor third. There is no way to recreate the whole thing moving on in fourths. So you will get a different chord there. If you start from G and you're in the G major key, G, then C, then F sharp. No, G then C, then uh, yeah, F sharp. You will create this chord. Makes sense. If you were starting from B, always in the G, in the G major scale, you will have B, uh, E, and A. And if you were starting from D, always in the G major scale, you will have uh, D, G, and C. None of them is a G major chord, which is G B D. Okay, so inversion of quartal chord cluster do exist. Yes, okay. you can like you invert chords made with tri with with with, with, with um, thirds you can invert chords made with quartal harmony so in fourths totally absolutely makes sense okay so the idea is that you go up in fourths and these create a set of notes you want to play together then you can switch the order of those notes however you want okay And not only that, <laughs> but in a moment, we're going to see that you can do this for quintal harmony and other crazy stuff. But first, I want to give the, the word back to the microphone back to Simon. Um, I was going to say uh, a little point on mixing traditional harmony, quartal harmony. Um, if you have a quartal harmony shape, such as this one here, you could just move, you could just change one note. So I could do this. So I've kind of I've got movement in my chord, which is nice, and I've kind of got a, a kind of hybrid chord there, if you like, because I've got some fourths, but on top I've got a third there, F sharp to A, and I could do. Now sometimes you might get a note that's out of key, so you can kind of you know be careful with that or or whatever. But then I might want a bit of a dissonant sound anyway. That's a, it's going from a quartal shape. To a, a altered seventh chord and to a seventh. So you know you can just find a shape and move a finger. You, you start to sort of get a, an idea of which ones will work and which won't. So I do that a little bit to and resolve. So, you know, you can get sort of movement within the chord and get some, um, you know, mixtures of chordal harmony and, and uh, you know, traditional harmony. The other thing uh, that, it, that you can do with chordal harmony, like you can do with any chords, is, is harmonise melody. Um, so I was not quite doing that at the beginning. I was more playing some solo lines and things mixed with chordal harmony. But it's basically the same thing, harmonizing notes, right? So that's why I may choose to play some quartal harmony on the lower strings is to leave room to play, you know, melody on the, the higher strings. Um, but if we took like, uh, you know, good old twinkle twinkle little star, right? If you just play that melody 
the top string, we can harmonize each one of those notes with quadrillal harmony. We just have to build the shape. You can kind of work backward, but build the shape from the melody note. And, and you know, so I'm up here on the D note. I just make sure that I'm harmonizing that D with the fourths, as I do when I go up to the E, back to the D, and then it just comes down the scale. But again, I know the patterns. It's like anything you learn on guitar. It reveals a pattern that you learn to visualize, so I don't really have to think about all that in real time. That's all been done. It's just using the pattern. Now, if I wanted to take that melody and get a little bit more separation between the, the harmony and, and the melody itself, here I'm sort of playing it all together. It's on four strings. <clears throat> I could use, as I was saying before, quartal shapes on the lower strings. Okay, there's a little bit more separate, it's a little bit of a bigger sound because I'm playing in the lower register and I'm also harmonizing but separating the melody from the bass. There's a, you know, so I can bit of a, an altered sound there that's just removing a finger and resolving into the, the a version of the one chord there so harmonizing melody becomes really simple um, when you know these quarter shapes and it's a way that you can can harmonize any melody really it doesn't have to be on one string it's just simpler to start with a single string simple melody um, we could take something like <laughs> so, um, hopefully we all know what that is, even though we are harmonising in fourths. Uh, so, start with right? Now, I don't have to either, even uh, harmonise every note necessarily. Like, you know, I could... Okay. So I can have some single note and I could do a similar thing I did with Twinkle Twinkle Little Star where I might uh, uh, you know, play on the lower strings and keep the melody where it is. So again, a little bit more separation, a little bit of a bigger sound. So it's got all sorts of possibilities that you have with traditional harmony when creating chord melody stuff and, and uh, it's, it's a really, really... Um, you know, cool thing to do, um, and pretty simple. And the thing, since since we discovered this, um, or somebody had the idea of doing this uh, when we're already into into the jazz era, um, jazz musician jumped on it immediately, and so they found the jazz examples. Essentially, they made it sound their way, but that doesn't mean that it has to sound this way. Um, I mean, two two kinds of people jumped on this immediately: the, the jazz players and the people who were writing for. TV series, sitcoms, and all the other stuff. If you, if we, if we really take the example that Simon was playing about Twinkle Twinkle Little Star in the key of G, right? Just playing those chords. Ignore. I mean, I'm just taking the notes of the melody. Play them. On, play them on top. But then I ignore the rhythm, I ignore the original song, and I just use this to create a chord progression, and I just arpeggiate that, coming back. Right? It doesn't sound like Twinkle Twinkle at the start anymore, I just created a new piece of music using an element from there. Okay, you could call it a variation, okay? Um, and you've heard what I just played. In several sitcoms, okay, or in the older sitcoms or, or or science fiction movies and other stuff, okay, and I'm pretty sure they, they were doing exactly that. Let's take a fragment of a scale or a melody I know already, and let's just put chords under these and just arpeggiate them. And um, some people here was was writing that 
they're 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 now playing uh, no wait that's not the right comment this one um i'm playing with court Har harmony on a synth in ableton right now and i'm learning a lot about how tense thing can sound it's so cool and, and this because if you take a synth and sustain all those notes and then especially with some some synth sound it can be really crunchy okay and um Someone was doing someone. Someone was doing another cool thing before. It was holding this chord and changing one note. And this, guys, this could be enough to start a piece. Okay. Okay, so a little bit of counterpoint over the chord, okay, which is just playing a few, just going one note up, one note down from the chord and see how those voices interact, okay, and, then, and always come back to the original chord and maybe change. Okay, and, and then change, change the chord, change the chord array. Etc. Etc. So those are lots of um, ideas to create. So yes, it sounds sounds baroque. Exactly. Somebody was writing here sounds baroque, and and, and that's in a sense it's my fault because uh, right now one of the things I'm doing is that I'm recovering a few of the Italian baroque instructionals. We have we have, we have some historical documents that showing how baroque people were teaching their students, and I'm trying to recover those and translate them from piano to guitar. Hell of a job, I tell you. <laughs> Especially when I start with those big chords and I'm like, <laughs> okay. But um, so, yeah, I have this in mind right now. But you see, I'm taking quartal harmony, which has nothing like they were doing, and you can make it sound baroque-ish. Okay. So, point I want to make here is that just because it sounded jazz in the first example doesn't have to sound jazz. Lots of soundtracks use this and it doesn't sound jazz. And you hear this in prog rock, you hear this in ambient music, you hear this in EDM, electronic dance music, more than you think, <laughs> okay? So get exploring. And I mean, if you, if, if you, have, if you have keyboards in the synth, by, by all means, you didn't have to play it on guitar. I mean, it's, this works on everything, okay? So we explore a little bit of quartal harmony. Now, like somebody was saying, what happens if we change interval? What happens if you use a fi if you use fifths rather than fourths? <laughs> okay, we have what we called. Oh wait, wait! Uh, I, I'm thinking horns uh, arranged with quartal harmony and the rest of the band arranged in traditional harmony for a sort of counterpoint. Yes, that's a good idea, and um, I'm afraid to tell you that it's not it's not it's not new. <laughs> okay, this has been done, um, and once you do it, you recognize the sound, but it's a great sound. And the thing is, you probably came to the idea by yourself right now, so good, you are on the right road, okay? But go and experiment with that. Anyway, what happens if we build our chords using different intervals? We can build our chords in fifths. Okay, now, fourths and fifths are really similar because one is the inversion of the other. Meaning, if I go to C to F, it's a fourth. But if I go from F to C, higher C, it's a fifth. So what happens is that the chords built in quartal harmony and the chord bu built in quintal harmony, so with fifths, will be similar, but they will not sound the same because when you play in quartal harmony, the voicing used most often is the one with the st stacked fourth, and then you can build the inver do the inversion, but you do more these than the inversions. It's a question of statistics, essentially. When you do use quintal harmony, you will stack the fifths, eh? They will sound more open, and then every now and then you will do the inversion of this, but it will be something you do less often, so this will sound more like this. You know quintal harmony already. Power chords, exactly. Somebody wrote power chords. The quintal harmony, the, 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 the simplest chord in quintal harmony is the power chord. Okay, great. But more than that, you have um, there are famous song who use quintal harmony. Message in a battle by the police because it, I mean everybody writes the score that's suspended seconds. It's not wrong, but those are quintal chords. Okay. 
Ok, va bene. Quinta chorus. I mean, this is C sharp, G sharp, D sharp. It's straight fifths. Stacked on top of each other, ok? Or if you want, power chords stacked on top of each other. Ok, so that works. Um, we're talking about how to use this stuff in prog rock. Well, you guys, if you guys listen to prog rock, you guys listen to Dream Theater. You may be familiar with the beginning of uh, Paul Neander. Okay, this is all, this is mostly quintal harmony. That's a quintal chord. That's another quintal chord. It's the second quintal chord in that key. And they play a quartal harmony chord. Okay. This one, then a power chord, which is still quintal harmony. And then they diminish the fifth there. So it's mostly quintal harmony. Knowing Dream Theater and knowing what the, what, where they come from, their philosophy, etc., I am pretty positive that that's exactly how they went about it. Like, why don't we write something in quintal harmony? <laughs> and why not? <laughs> okay, that's that's how I imagine Petrucci going, and Petrucci and and and, and um, the, the first the, 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 the keyboard player Kevin. I don't remember his last last name. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Going at the, at the beginning, like, what do we do now? <laughs> okay, let's fight something in quintal harmony. Okay. Quintal harmony has this thing. It, it sounds really, really open. That's... With chords of three notes. With chords of four notes, you have to go up another fifth. So you have a C, G, D, and the fifth above, it's an E. It's an A, so you have to put it on the first string, otherwise... So the second string would be here. So you put it on the first string. Super open. No, no uh, somebody's writing Jordan Ruders. No, um, Paul Meander is in Images and War, which is the second album, and they didn't play with Jordan Ruders yet. I'm talking about the first keyboard player. Kevin. Can't remember his name. Anyway, quintal harmony with four notes. Quintal harmony with five notes, it's. At this point, it starts to be more complex to play on the guitar, okay? Maybe on a keyboard it's easier, but, but still, I mean, with those fifths are really wide because you need, you, need, you need to span a ninth. The, the, the one, the five, and the ninth, on the, and so it tends to be quite big for most hands, okay? So that's why, by the way, quintal harmony is used a little bit less than quartal harmony because it's harder to play on instruments that play chords. And that's why, by the way, if we talk back about Kim Crimson, their guitar player, what's his name? Um, oh, come on, I didn't... Uh, you guys know I'm, I'm horrible, 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 horrible with name. No, Robert Fripp. Um, okay. I'm really horrible with name. I don't know how it's possible. I mean, if, anyway, uh, it, it, it's a wonder I remember the, the, the name of my, my wife and daughters. I mean, it's... <laughs> anyway, Fripp. Uh, Fripp is tuning his guitar not in fourths like most uh, of us common mortals. He used to tune the guitar mostly in fifths. So he was going C, G, D, A, E. And the last string was a G, so a minor third from the B. Mostly, I guess, because otherwise he would have broken the string because it would have been <laughs> simply too intense. But it also gives him in some interesting possibilities. And then he built most of his, most of his playing, yeah, around that this tuning that he called the new standard tuning. And he also built a music school around that. But um, I mean, interesting idea. You do a lot of quintal harmony in that. In that. I mean, that's what it's built for, essentially, to get, have those chords with super big intervals. OK, so and again, if you guys are into alternate tuning, that's something you can explore. OK. Makes sense. Simon, anything to add? Uh, to all of this? Um, just perhaps one more way you could uh, work with quartal harmony, coming back to, to our fourths, um, is to, to play it over droning strings to create a tonal center. So I'll just stick with G here to you know, keep it simple. But if I was to drone a low E string and then play the, the G shapes, 
then that's giving me, I'm really playing E Aeolian, right? A mode of G, the sixth mode of G. So I can just, just create a nice Aeolian mood, if you like, using chordal harmony. Um, across the drone of the low E string, or I could use the A string and use the same shapes. And now I'm playing in the, the tonal center of A Dorian, second mode of G. I come back to, to the E, back to the A. Etc. Right? You could create a little groove or just play very rubato or whatever you wanted to do, but just to explore the sound. And any mode with a root of E or A, you can explore. If I wanted to play uh, like Phrygian, E Phrygian, then I could do that, droning the E and playing Phrygian on top. Third mode of C major, so you could just think of C if you wanted, but um, all the same, you, you, you're in E Phrygian there. So droning it over chords, uh, a drone, a drone, a playing the chords over droning strings is very cool. And um, if you wanted to play like an A blues and use these shapes again, just with G major, if we were to play the G major shapes, staying in the, in G. G, even though we're not really going to be in G here, but if we're using the shapes of G and we play them over an A blues, that's giving us the Dorian blues, right? We can play G major over the top of a, a blues, A blues, and get the Dorian blues sound. So we could do that with a quartal harmony. And, and I, I pick A because I've got the roots of the three um, chords of A blues on my lower string. So it could be... So that's just playing through a 12 bar blues and I'm only playing G shapes with the chordal harmony but of course they're reacting to the chords in various ways and so these are just some ways that you can get up and going with it. I could have played through that and, and followed sort of the key center and played A mixolydian, D mixolydian, E mixolydian, um, all those things but that's it's simpler just to stay in, in G for the moment or the A Dorian really for the most part. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, another way that you can work with quarter harmony. Fantastic, fantastic. And I show you one last thing to those guys, especially because some of them have been with us for now, what, 55 minutes. So I want to give you a last thing just to thank them for being um, with us for so long. We build chords in thirds, the normal stuff, in fourths, in fifths. You can use other intervals. Um, most people shy away from building chords in seconds because they think it, it will sound too clustery or too dissonant. And also they are hard to play. I mean, to build a chord in seconds, say in C, you have to play the C, the D, and the E at the same time. And first of all, it's a, a problem. Okay. <laughs> okay. Or I can play the B, C, and D. But it sounds pretty dissonant. So what do we do here? By the way, this is called secundal harmony, so chords built in seconds. What do you do is that you move one of the notes up an octave. Okay, so for instance, the secundal harmony three note chord on C, it's C, D, E. And again, that I should play originally in the same octave, but it's hard. So I'm taking the D note and I'm pushing it up. So now I have C, E, and D. Which sounds like an add nine without the fifth, because it is. <laughs> okay, so, and, and you start, build, you can build those kind of chords here, so like. Essentially. And when you play them on, on the lower register of the guitar, especially with a warmer sound like this.
tend to have this kind of melancholic uh, sound, emotions swelling up and all this kind of thing. So, and this building chords in seconds, at, in, if you just imagine it, like at the beginning, it's like, now there's going to be dissonant, there's going to be all clustery and dissonant and super modern. Doesn't look like, no? <laughs> so, and then again, yeah, there's, there are some of those flat second dissonances. If you like them, you like them. Otherwise, just avoid them. I mean, it's not that easy. And these can be mixed with the normal harmony, the quartal harmony, the quintal harmony. You, you guys can build a chord progression with a chord in, a, in, a, in every different kind of harmony. I mean, it's, again, you don't have to stick to one. You can use all of them. No problem. Okay. If you know how to connect them, which is the voice leading idea. And again, if you want to know more about voice leading, ask me or ask Simon. What is Simon? <laughs> Simon, okay. Excuse. Uh, we, can, we can both teach that to you. Okay. So that would be the idea. Now, before we go, Simon, I understand you have something that you want to show the people. And let me just, just find a graphic here. Up, 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 up. Yeah, that you're giving this thing away. You're giving this away. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> So this is, yeah, this is an ebook audio. So all examples you'll be able to hear. And it, it's, it's basically working with chords, traditional harmony here, but chord fragments. Um, so, you know, for example, if we've got like an A bar chord within and inside that chord, we have all little chord fragments. It's kind of like the babushka dolls. If you think of those, you got little dolls inside the bigger doll. And so it's like, here's the, 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 the large chord. And then inside you got these little chord fragments, not just with root six bar chord, but other chords too. So this book is based around that and different ways, five ways, in fact, that you can use those in your playing from sort of comping yourself or backing your solos or chord melody sort of things, this type of stuff. So, um, and it's all about, uh, overall with, with chords, it's all about relationships, you know, nothing stands on its own in isolation. So it's relating all these little shapes to the larger bar chord shapes. And with the quartal harmony stuff we've been doing, that I also see that in the context of traditional harmony on the fretboard because it helps anchor it down for me. So it's all about referencing and, and connecting shapes together. And so this is all about fragmented chords and being able to use them in various ways in your plane. So you can go to that URL on your screen or perhaps Tommaso is going to put it in the chat and that's free. Um, you can check it out and hopefully that'll further extend the possibilities you have with your um, harmony on the guitar. Yep, and you find a link to this ebook in the description on YouTube and you can find us on my website. You went to a page to see all these. So if, if you were in my newsletter, you went to a page to see all these. There are, there's the link there too. So I mean, you, don't, you don't have to copy the link letter by letter, okay? I mean, if you want, you can. But then I have something for you guys too. You may have seen this one already, okay? But it's still new, okay? It's 18 tips on how to make your pentatonic solo sound professional. We all know the pentatonic scale, no? The good old... Nice pentatonic scale. The problem with the pentatonic scale is that it's too easy, meaning that... And there are just a few notes in there, so it's easy to learn, but then it's not as easy to make it sound, to make it emotional, to make it expressive, okay? I mean, we know people who can do that. We know we all know great players who can do that, and most of us started playing guitar because we, they hear some of those people, okay? Jimmy Page, uh, Hendrix, uh, um, David Gilmore, Pink Floyd, okay? Eric Clapton, all those kind of greats. Uh, that's some of them are, are, are blues influence, some other average influences, etc. Et Jeff Beck, okay? All those kind of people. In this guide here, I collected 18 of the best tricks. Those are not licks, okay? Those are not just, that's the lick, that's the lick, that's the lick, you're done. No, those are ways to think about that so that you, said that you can use them together and improvise your own licks. Those are the building blocks of the famous licks. Separated, explain it exactly step by step on how and, and how to make them sound. And of course, there are examples. Examples are video examples, so you can go and see exactly how I'm doing it and exactly you can hear how it sounds. And you can and then you can see me improvising a little bit using those tricks. So you know exactly how it goes. And that's completely free. I mean, we are crazy by giving away this kind of stuff. I mean, I don't, I don't know. We should, we should, I, I should have sold this. But anyway, <laughs> it's free now. It's going to stay free. You find it at the link below, and again, it's in the description, etc., etc. Very good. Let me grab Simon again. Simon, thank you for 
coming today. I, I know I say it every time, but it's always a pleasure to have you here because by seeing you doing all these things, you and I both know a lot of theory. But we apply it always in a different way, and I love that. <laughs> I see you doing it like, why didn't I get that idea? It's great. <laughs> likewise, likewise, it's great. That's what's so good to, to come together and do something like this, or if you're just jamming with somebody, there's, there's always new things to learn on the things that you may think you already know. It's, it's just, yeah. I mean, I haven't explored uh, Scandal or, or Quintal Harmony that much, but uh, I'll be doing that now. Yeah. So mm. thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Um, I, I would love to see what do you do with Secundal Harmony, knowing, knowing your knowing what you can do on the guitar. <laughs> yeah, a few months, I'm going to check up on you <laughs> and see what's happening there. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for having me, Tomaso, and thank you everyone for for coming out. Hopefully, you got something from that, and and I would encourage everyone to really explore. I mean, the, the guitar is such a beautiful harmonizing instrument, and um, you know, if you sort of think of it like a piano. Um, it's kind of more obvious on a piano, perhaps, to you know, do certain things. But it, it's yeah, often it's so underexplored all the harmony possibilities, chords I'm talking about. Um, and um, if, if you're thinking chordal harmony in a little bit more of a jazz context, if you're into that sort of thing, I would check out um, Kind of Blue, Miles Davis with Bill Evans piano. That was a very, it's a huge album for the time and, and in uh, yeah, in the history of jazz. But most of that album on the piano, he's playing quartal harmony. And it was very revolutionary for that. And a guitar player that wanted to really emulate Bill Evans, was a massive, massive fan of Bill Evans, was Lenny Bro, who was just a ridiculous player, just a fantastic player. Check him out. He uses a lot of, he did in his time gone now, but used a lot of quartal harmony. So did a lot of jazz players, Herbie Hancock and Kai Tyner. Um, so good good uh, players to check out in hearing you know, quartal harmony and getting familiar with the sound. So yeah, yeah. so thank you. Before, before we go, if you guys, I, I, I see your comments, Guy, and you love and, and, and you love some of the stuff in, in, in this session. If you like this session, share the link everywhere, put it on your Facebook, put it on your Instagram, put it on your whatever, Twitter, whatever. And, um, um give, give it a like on youtube okay just share the link with your friends send it send it to the people you think they will like it other musicians if you liked it let other people know and thank you for coming tonight on <laughs> august 19 friday evening <laughs> okay thank you for being here with us and until next time guys enjoy thank you